Welcome to another episode of the Real World Assets Show. Join us on our journey to tokenize the world. Let's roll. Welcome back to another episode of the Real World Assets Show. Today we have a special guest. We have Andrew Almeida here from Rise and Shine. He's the managing director, managing partner of the fund. And just on the show today, because a recent announcement with uh, Oasis Pro and Avalanche, uh, this specific uh, Avalanche infrastructure fund uh, has been in the works for over a year, and now we can announce it. it. It was announced earlier this week, and we're one of the first shows to pick this up. So welcome, Andrew. Welcome to the show. This is, uh, this is amazing. Thank you, Travis. I'm really excited about the conversation um, and to be a part of the conversation uh, a little more officially now. Yeah, likewise. I, and uh, I've been chatting with your team uh, for over a month, I had a, had a call, and I, you, you've been actively fundraising, and most of this has kind of been a bit in stealth mode over the past year. And as we talked about earlier, you know, fundraising and, and funds, and even a lot of the infrastructure stuff around blockchain wasn't, you know, wasn't a great year in 2023. Uh, that's significantly picked up in 2024, as we know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of wind be- behind our sales now. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, wh- how this got started, yeah. and uh, then we can get into Rise and Shine. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and thank you for having us. I have a traditional finance background, cut my teeth in you know, Wall Street per se, working across asset classes, equity, fixed income, even as a, a multi-asset class uh, portfolio manager, junior PM uh, in my most recent you know, banking role. Did a lot of consulting out on my own um, when I started working independently after leaving, you know, the corporate side and, and naturally started finding my way into blockchain. So fast forward to how we, we really birthed the idea for this fund was during this time of crisis, right? Like after FTX exploded, you know, you felt the magnitude of what was going to happen to the industry, right? And, and I guess for me personally, having you know, I got my Series 7 license in the year, you know, 2008. I think it was January of 08. And the firm I was working at made us get our six license first. So I got my Series 6 in like the summer of 07. And then, uh, so if you know that time of year, like the magnitude of like a, a centralized institution blowing up and, and fallout, I had already experienced that on the TradFi side and saw what was happening on... Um, you know, in the, let's call it crypto side and knowing that like, all right, there's going to be opportunity coming out of this, right? Like this thing, which, and I hadn't gotten into the space too heavily uh, at all. You know, spent most of my career in traditional finance, passed on Bitcoin, passed on Ethereum. I didn't spend the time getting to know the power of decentralized consensus, what that will mean uh, for computing. And you know, so, you know, among the, the, the crypto crisis, crypto winter, I said, what, what's real here? What can we really look at that might have staying power? And, and I can have uh, something to offer or discuss with the traditional finance community that I know and, and I've been a part of um, when they're looking for clarity in this asset class now. So we were opportunistic about coming up with the idea for this fund. For me, Avalanche is, is you know, the choice that we looked at and decided we want to commit our time to based upon the protocol and uh, the team and the architecture and what it might mean for enterprise and, and institutions. So yeah, I mean, the fund has been over a year in the making, testing our own validators and testing the messaging. I, I think, and we should talk about this, I mean, the messaging and the communication in this world between the traditional finance world and the, and the crypto world, um, I think we want to be a better part and a big part of helping improve that conversation. Yeah, that's well said. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm not a young guy, so I, I've, I was through the 08 crisis as well. I mean, I, was, uh, I owned a title company, a mortgage company, real estate company, very heavy in distressed assets during that time. It was actually a more active time in real estate. Uh, and, and more lucrative, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, for, for many of the end users, but, but from a transactional standpoint, you know, there, there was a lot going on. But as you mentioned, blockchain solves a lot of that. Like most of that was just all the murkiness of financial data. Right. So in, with today, with blockchain, with distributed ledger and with AI, all of that is essentially solved. Like the 08 situation, doesn't, it isn't only solved. Like you don't, you know, there were still bad loans. Don't get me wrong. But right. 
it would have been most of that um, the, the compounding effects that we were we were dealt with dealing with for many years could have been uh, identified way in advance clearly yeah and a number of problems under under underneath that kind of OE crisis like you're saying just transparency into data time of which you receive data the number of uh, different participants who need access to, let's say, like the mortgage pool of data, but they're all reconciling it from different places. Like, we really need to get blockchain and crypto back to the concept of talking about the power of shared ledgers um, and, and away from meme coins and away from a lot of the, the you know, things that have tainted the color of this industry. Yeah. No, I, I, one of the, I think one of the first posts that I, I came across from you guys was probably like six months ago, and it was uh, something I think Julie put out about, like, let's have a conversation about blockchain, not crypto. And, you know, and, and obviously they're, they, they kind of are, go together like peanut butter and jelly in a lot of ways when they're put together in, 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 a, in a sound infrastructure. Correct. But blockchain is really where the magic is happening. And uh, you mentioned that, and I appreciate that. And I think... Again, I, I'm a big fan of L1s and, and blockchains, and particularly Avalanche and the team there. Obviously, being you know uh, born out of Cornell, uh, obviously a New York-based company, and, and very focused. You know, I've met Morgan and, and many of the people on institutional team and on, on Avalanche. I've had them on the show, and they uh, you know they're doing quite a few uh, uh, their inroads into finance, particularly City and many of the others, uh, is is significant. You know, mm -hmm. and obviously they're not going to be the only winner, you know, blockchains, there's several others that you know, I've had on the show and, and I talk about that are doing a great job, but Avalanche is definitely one of, one of the few that are going to make it. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the long run, I think having a fund, and again, uh, we haven't really got into kind of the problem you're addressing and maybe that this is a good uh, transition, but ultimately, like, where did you see after doing your due diligence and realizing like Avalanche is doing some great things and blockchains, the future what uh, what was kind of this big idea, this intersection of of how your fund came together and why infrastructure was was the issue? Yeah. So when you know looking for opportunity and doing the diligence across different chains and understanding protocols for us, um, you know, I spent time taking uh, Gary Gensler's MIT class actually, where you know it's free online on YouTube. Anyone can take it. I recommend everyone yeah. to take it to get educated on what's going on in this industry. But when you start getting a fundamental understanding of, of the components that make these up, right? Because we did, you mentioned Julie bringing up, well, let's talk blockchain, not crypto. And she's done, you know, Julie McKenna, um, marketing head of our team, has done an incredible job with the communication of this because what we have found is that like the term crypto is just so widely used. Like, of course, the concept of cryptography and the digital signatures and all the cryptographic technology underneath blockchain, those components are very important. It's the term cryptocurrency that people ran away with. And, you know, obviously currencies are regulated by governments, right? There's everything got murky. So when we look at the fundamental reason of like why these systems exist and we get back to the concept of decentralized agreement, right? How do we come to agreement? And then how do we store that data, right? The consensus protocol and the blockchain and the virtual machine, right? These are all different components that when you look at what they are and understand where the innovation is and where the innovation's been made, Avalanche becomes a very attractive option because they've made innovations in how we come to agreement. Right, they've made yeah. innovation in how we store agreement, and then they've made innovation in how, or they've innovated on how we build and separate these components. Right, like you look at uh, the Ethereum ecosystem and the Ethereum virtual machine are you know tied together. You now have some um, that concept is kind of coming out to start using you know, building virtual machines into into that, uh, trying to introduce other virtual machines into that ecosystem, but. Avalanche, that architecture has always existed uh, from the beginning, right? right? So when we look at the differences in the components and uh, the ability to come to agreement, we see like a superior architecture for what? And this is the problem we believe we're helping solve as a fund that Avalanche has helped solve and that we want to invest in the infrastructure to continue to do is how to bring institutions into this world. 
right? The, when we think about why blockchain or how blockchain is going to get adopted or cryptography uh, is going to get adopted or um, these ecosystems, it's going to be in the building of applications that take advantage of decentralized agreement or shared ledgers, right? So when you see some of the applications that or institutions that are starting to gravitate gravitate towards Avalanche and how they could benefit from using shared ledgers, it really starts to make a lot of sense. And that's why we're here, right? So Avalanche and their architecture give you the ability to do that, to create your own permissioned and privatized blockchains. Uh, they were calling them subnets. I think there's some rebranding around now, you know, calling them L1s. Um, and that's really what it is. It's like it's a blockchain as a service ecosystem where any institution, enterprise, video game, right, can go spin out their own private blockchain and then customize. We talked about the architectures, the different pieces of, uh, of, of how you would put a chain together, coming to agreement, processing that data and storing that data. Avalanche has separated those pieces so you can customize your own chains, right, um, and privatize them permission the users, KYC, who comes in. I mean, it all starts to look very friendly um, from an institutional perspective about why institutions would choose to use Avalanche, right? They can effectively start with their own private chain and then, you know, their um, you know, initial network, internal network, and then start permissioning out from there. And I mean, the flexibility uh, from building your own layer one using Avalanche um, is just is really what attracted us but then you you know i think the average person would then say well what is what are the what is avalanche then and why are they using them what what does it really boil down to because i ask myself this question a lot like what what does that really what is the network it's hard for people to get their heads around it you know because if you have all these other layer ones subnets using avalanche like what is avalanche and people really need to start to understand that that fundamental, or at least what we're standing behind, advancement in the consensus protocol, right? The, all these L1s that will be launching off of Avalanche are fundamentally going to be using Avalanche's agreement mechanism for coming to agreement. Duh. And we think that's really powerful. We think Avalanche made an advancement there, the team out of Cornell, um, and we think it'll make a big difference when it comes to scaling blockchains. So I know that was a lot. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's um it's a very unique architecture, and, and um, that's why we're supporting it, the infrastructure there. So yeah, no, it's very well said, and and it's not a uh, uh, an elementary school uh, explanation. Like you said, it's nuanced, it's complex. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts, and I think you said it very well, uh, as as condensed as you could. So, and I totally agree that they're, they're obviously in a rebranding standpoint. I mean, notable subnets right now are more in the gaming side. You have Shrapnel, you have Beam, you have some, some well-known ones, but a lot of these use cases have been proven out. A Avalanche has uh, obviously participated in Project Guardian, which involves City, Wisdom Tree, et cetera. Uh, we've seen several use cases and uh, even some that are not public yet of uh, pilot programs that are that are happening that can't be publicized yet where uh, financial other financial institutions are happening or are, are involved and as you mentioned the ability to roll up your own permissioned public however you want to control it have your own l1 is seems to be where the puck is going for the future of finance and the future really of of blockchain in general whether you're a gaming project or not as you mentioned most of what uh, the needs are is you want to have your own blockchain. You know, you don't want to run an L2 on your laptop, you know, and call nice. it an L2. And, you know, I know that that, you know, that gets poked fun a lot, but that the truth is, I mean, sometimes that is what's going on is literally like there's, um, it's not a true blockchain infrastructure where you're able to leverage, obviously, Avalanche's architecture, but then you're also able to have all of your controls at your disposal. Like you mentioned, if you're a financial institution, you can have all your KYC, AML, everything built in. And if, if you're a gaming, a gaming side and you want to have your own like Beam, you have your own token, you literally have your own blockchain with your own e economy, right. your, own, your own token economy. And that's where, like we talked about earlier, you know, 
that's where crypto makes sense or that's where a tokenized economy makes sense because you literally have a complete ecosystem where your gaming infrastructure is incentivized and it runs completely on the beam token uh, and you know that's that's a genius setup and i think that's where you see things like jp morgan doing like jpm coin things like that where uh it doesn't make um sense for everybody but when you actually think it through and you design the right architecture for the right use case uh it's magical you know what the next step for the future of finance is so i think getting into the specifics of why your fund is uh, exists and why it's infrastructure for avalanche like what's what are the issues with onboarding uh people in, into subnets you know for avalanche i mean yeah that, i think that's that's obviously what you guys are solving mainly and clearly that's you know, the precursor of course probably is some, some expenses i'm guessing but yeah. like maybe maybe give me some background of why that why that's needed yeah, well, at a fundamental level, it's a proof of stake ecosystem. So you have to put up tokens, capital, in order to run the protocol and, and operate uh, a, a node or a validator right, on, on the system to validate transactions, validate data. Now, yeah. you know, as you're scaling a blockchain and you figure that, oh, you may want to operate your own chain, you'll need more validators, which will cost more capital and require the you know, the IT infrastructure and know-how, technical expertise of securing your network. So you have a capital requirement and you have a requirement for technical expertise. So there's a, there's a, there's a funnel, uh, there's a gap into, you know, for many startups for certain to get involved or, or build an application on Avalanche if they wanted to build their own L1, it's, it's cost intensive. Um, and two, you know, they may not want to focus on running the network and securing the network, right? I mean, we know very well how the IT industry is, right? There's, there's not a, 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 let me say it this way, there's a shortage of IT industry workers and not all of them are you know, excited to leave the jobs they've had uh, a, a career building in or ready to retire and you know, built a career in and are just going to jump into blockchain. That is, is, it does matter to have those skills. Um, I think maybe when the these systems were developed, they thought like every company or internal team would just be, you know, going through these docs and be okay, you know, running their own validators and, and nodes. But um, really, not the case. So just the capital requirement and the technical expertise is a is an issue we're solving for as a fund, right? With that capital, we'll deploy it to validators and run those validators. Where what I think we've done that's very unique that no one else has done is we're, we're solving a second order problem, which is getting the traditional investment world, the TradFi world, as they like to say, into the decentralized finance world. And you can't do that through another, you know, on-chain restaking DeFi protocol or, you know, another Celsius. We, you know, we can't keep making the same mistakes over and over again. We have to go meet people where they are. And the traditional finance people know how to allocate as an alternative investment you know, through a fund structure that's a Delaware fund that's audited or, or now through ETFs we've seen approved. But what, you know, we've done is set up a private fund structure that allows them to allocate in a way that they're familiar with, but now allocate to the infrastructure um, of blockchain. So what we're, you know, we're trying to match and align the interests of investors with the needs of those building on the network. And those building on the network need what? They need validators. They need capital and technical expertise. We're going to provide that as a fund. And how will we offer return to our investors? Obviously, the Avalanche main net staking reward. But what we've innovated and I think we'll do quite differently is now think of this as a traditional financial product infrastructure fund where you then lease out that infrastructure right to those who need nodes to build. And we can create another income source to the fund that way and have a uh, trusted arrangement, right? As a, almost as an IT blockchain operator for that company who needs uh, someone to help run their nodes or to expand their network. Yeah. We think we've done um, an interesting thing in aligning those two objectives. I agree. You know, the, for context too, as you mentioned, like the proof of stake network the the rewards on the on staking on the avalanche network is you know is, is not to be 
uh, diminished in, in importance because it's 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 a huge you know there's definitely great rewards there from from someone investing in the fund and as you mentioned there's other income streams that are coming as part of that leasing uh, node infrastructure etc and I think that's you know yeah I, I wasn't aware of that that's that's a great that's a great well, add-on well, well yeah I mean think about anyone who wants to go start an application on Avalanche they're going to have to put up two thousand coins you know if they want to start a subnet or new or their own L one two thousand coins. Per validator. Per, per yeah. validator. Yeah. That's eighty thousand dollars per validator. Yeah. Right? Five, ten, it gets costly. So how how can they get their project started or expand their networks? They could lease from us. There's also, you know, very interesting developments with the Basel three capital requirement requirements for digital assets. The increased capital requirements against banks makes it more costly to hold these assets on their balance sheet. Well, now there's a rental option. You know, if you're going to continue to build out your bank infrastructure and applications um, on the Avalanche network, and you don't want to run those validators or keep those assets locked, you know, on your balance sheet, you can rent validators from a, you know, U.S.-based Delaware fund. So I think what we've done is um, very unique and very supportive of expanding this network the network infrastructure. I mean, it truly is network protocol infrastructure for decentralized applications, right? We're not launching a token. We're not creating our own protocol. We're taking the traditional path and providing, you know, capital to the, to the new world. Let's call it the decentralized right. world. Yeah. I mean, one of my first careers, I was involved in, in tech and consulting and I worked with, you know, Companies like Capgemini and other uh, consulting agencies, where you know we were working on tech projects and deliverables, and you know as over the years, I mean, you learn about like there are agencies and there's there are consulting companies and infrastructure companies just serving IBM, just serving you know all these different. This is really just the next wave of technology innovation. Is that the next rise is on all of these L ones where all this infrastructure is moving there. So it's just, this sounds like a new concept. Yes. Like I know to, to new, you know, to, like you said, to new people, but this, this has been going on forever. This is no different than, than the companies that have multi-million dollar companies uh, that are IBM certified partners or Microsoft certified partners or all these certified partners who I've worked with over the years that all rose through the you know, internet activation, you know, so now we're into the blockchain activation, which means there's a whole different set of partners that are coming to the table. One being how Rise and Shine is deploying and injecting capital into this, this opportunity and network infrastructure. And as you mentioned, deploying on, on, a, on a blockchain like Avalanche could be, a, you know, generally four to six validators are, are recommended. You know, you're looking at almost a half a million dollars to just support the network you know that's before any any deal flow <laughs> any anything happening sure. it's important that you know you're able to look at that and and this does solve a big big need and a big problem and also takes uh, deal flow that's coming in through avalanche and essentially helping it you know to redirect into areas where hey like maybe you're not quite ready to validate your own stuff or you don't have the internal resources like you mentioned here's where you can uh, look at Rise and Shine and, and their infrastructure partners. But, like, I guess, um, unless you want to add anything, I think it's important to talk about like the fund and and in particular, like how you know how now you, it can be accessed uh, through your partnership with o Oasis Pro Markets, right? Like that's yeah, that's uh, the big that's the big unlock. That's I the big news. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's 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 been a, a lot of time in the making for testing for getting the story out. I mean, we went to the Avalanche Summit in Barcelona last year, and I you know, talk about doing like your due diligence. I just went and bothered everyone I could speak to and told them about this idea and tried to understand what they were doing with their validators, just to get a feel for how people would react to it, just to get a feel for what people wanted and, and could help them. Uh, so now we're here, we're at that point, um, we're raising capital um, and, and very excited about this partnership with Oasis Pro. You know, their interests are very much in lockstep with ours in terms of bringing the traditional investment world to the decentralized finance world or blockchain world. Infrastructure is a key, a key part of that. So having their support, I mean, it really means a lot to us. Having them as a placement agent to help us in the capital raise, um, I think is going to make for a great long-term partnership between, between both of us. And, um, and help bring more assets on chain, right? As more uh, companies look to tokenize real world assets, I think they'll start deciding to take the path 
of putting them on their on private networks first and and they'll need private network infrastructure we think avalanche is the best place to do that yeah and the like you mentioned it's going to really depend on what their needs are and it's probably going to be that combination of public private as you mentioned definitely very permissioned at first most likely is going to be the the path and then uh, i mean we're obviously we're seeing some funds like blackrock and the securitized stuff be issued on ethereum ethereum but and and that's really more just a fund there where there's instant settlement. It's that's obviously all the the late you know all the wallets are uh, it's all white label you know or whitelisted type of stuff. So it's not something that anybody can defy or anything like that. You know right. it's not. A, but it's a good start. You know clearly, and it's been a big, big a big newsworthy part of of uh, the growth here of of everything we're seeing. Yeah, I mean so, all, a lot of great news coming out and institutions starting to to take their step in. You know, we've we've put out a few LinkedIn posts that just like for the last year, since the Avalanche Summit that I went to last year, just saying like the institutions are, they're coming to this space. And uh, I think this is just the beginning. So it's an exciting time. It is. So what's next? I mean, as we're, as we're winding down here, I think, you know, this has been an excellent conversation. Um, and, you know, we'll definitely have you back. I know that's, it's early, uh, but this was, this was big news. And, and as we've been talking over the past month, with Julie, I wanted to, you know, we, we chatted, this was probably a good event to have you on, at least for a quick chat, and we can have you back as you're raising funds, or you have additional uh, partners that you, you know, maybe some new projects that you've uh, locked in that are that are going to be using your infrastructure agreements, etc. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, what else? Uh, yeah, would we you would like to share? Love to come back sometime. Uh, definitely keep you posted as to what uh, partnerships we have on the um, subnet side and interest that comes in across the fund when we get the fund the fund uh, closed. So, yeah, for us next, it's just completing the fundraise. People can come learn more about us um, either through our website, our socials, or Oasis Pro. Uh, and we'll continue to have more of these conversations. So we, we appreciate you bringing us on for this. Likewise. Yeah, yeah. that's been great having you, Andrew. And uh, I'll share all the links when, when I share this, this out with my audience, but it's rns.partners is the the main jumping off point you can get to linkedin and and obviously uh, learn more about the oasis pro uh partnership and uh get access to the fund that way and and uh find out more if that's if you happen to be someone listening that's in that accredited status and is interested in in taking a look at the fund so yeah of course let me be very explicit about that the fund is for accredited investors only all the concepts of uh you know doing your own risk, your own diligence, you know, please, please be very careful in the space and, and do your research on what we're doing and, and what others are doing in the industry. Yeah. Well, this is, this is a unique uh, solution and uh, kudos for, for at least the, the next step and, uh, you know, the big partnership and, and the announcement. So we'll be chatting again soon. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks Great a lot. Chat. Take care, Travis. All right. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. And that's a wrap for this episode of the Real World Assets Show. Thanks for joining us on our journey to transform the future of finance, one asset and token at a time. For more insights, visit us on the web at rwa.builders. I'm Travis John, and I'll see you on the next episode.